Hello everyone. Today we have with us Nisha Millet, ma'am. Hi. Hi, Ajante. How are you? I'm doing great. What about you? Good, thanks. Okay. So, can you uh, t- t- tell something about your uh, your Olympic journey and uh, how was your experience going to the uh, Sydney 2000 Games? Ah, uh, it was an amazing experience. You know, from the time I learned swimming at the age of nine years. uh i watched the barcelona olympics one year later so i was 10 years when i watched the 92 barcelona olympics and i think that ignited something in me where i had this dream and i said i can make it to the olympics and uh, i started my journey from there and it was no fairy tale where you know you try out and you immediately qualify so 1996 at the atlanta olympics i tried out and i narrowly missed the qualifying time and i didn't go and uh, as a 14 year old it was quite tough i had to like you know reassess my priorities i had to really focus and say okay i can do this on the next try so it took me a good 4 years of hard training uh, i moved uh, to bangalore i moved to basungudi which is uh, bac the one of the top yeah. clubs in the country uh, under my coach pradeep kumar and then towards the end of 99 uh, my coach himself said you really need that foreign exposure the experts that they have abroad so i got a scholarship and it got me to train in australia in a place called perth and uh, the last 5 6 months of my qualifying period i trained there and i think that training plus all the years of training that pradeep sir had given me that i had gone through that really helped because you know just few months maybe four months before the olympics uh, i swam a meet in australia and it was just the heats in the morning i had planned to try for the qualifying time in the evening in the finals but maybe because i didn't have much pressure i was you know really fresh i dived into the pool i felt like i was in the zone my strokes felt long and strong uh, my flip turns my underwater everything really felt like on the you know on the spot that day right. and yeah. it felt like um, when i reached the wall i had won my heat and qualified for the final but i saw my mother just jumping up and down when i turned to look at the touch pads then i realized that uh, i saw that time you know the time board and then i realized that i'd gone 2 minutes 6 seconds and uh, my best time before that was 2 minutes 8 and the olympic qualifying was 2 minutes 7 seconds so that's when it hit me that wow i've actually qualified for the olympics so definitely one of the most amazing uh, journeys because i had to call my dad call my coach pradeep sir tell them i had qualified it's such an exciting moment for me uh, that same year i got the arjuna award from the president of india so 2000 was a great year and right now we're in another olympic year i think then i remember all those olympic memories whether it is uh going for the opening ceremony dressed in a sari and a blazer yeah. whether it's lighting the torch uh you know you see the torch relay coming and then the olympic flame being lit the countdown and the, the games being open and it's just amazing to have all these other athletes there the top athletes from different sports and to know that you are one of them that that was made it a really special experience uh my actual event the 200 freestyle i swam the heats and i won my heat uh but unfortunately didn't make the semi finals and it was a great experience for an 18 year old i was just awestruck by everything around me i was so excited uh, you know whether it was meeting leander pays whether it was watching karna maleshwari get a bronze for our country it was just uh, you know you can't really put into words uh, going and watching hockey matches and badminton seeing our indian team perform seeing some of the world greats whether it's sergey bubka whether it's uh, mohammad ali seeing them uh, you know in the olympic village it's just i can't explain how amazing the entire event was Okay, great. So you mentioned that you trained under Pradeep sir. So he has yeah. been one of the prominent and the uh, you know most uh, you know wanted coaches. Uh, so as, as a swimmer, like most of the swimmers want to train under uh, him. So how does it feel 21 years later? You know Pradeep sir is still coaching and he has got the first swimmer like Sajan Prakash got his A cut. You know he is the first coach to get an A cut through a swimmer. So how does it yeah. feel uh, being trained under him back 21 years ago? Uh, really i think it's the most amazing decision that my parents took in my career was to put him put me with him you know because somehow uh, he took me to the next level so it you know it's a coach and a swimmer that works together and of course their family that actually gets you to the top so definitely pradeep sir played a very big role in my career uh, one thing i love about him is he treats all swimmers equal uh, you could just be uh, a state finalist or you could be an olympian he still treat you the same uh, that's the mark of a great coach at the same time if i ever needed to go talk to him get his advice um he was always there for me and for my parents 
So it was really great. He's a very, uh, you know, very dedicated, very focused professional coach. And uh, I was so excited, you know, number one, and I qualified. But even recently when Sajan did the A qualifying, which is a huge achievement, uh, we were one of the first few people to call Pradeep, sir. As soon as he had got back home, I did a video call with him and my parents were there and we were all laughing and, you know, clapping for him. And uh, he was very emotional, almost crying, you know, and he was remembering my qualifying. And then now Sajan's A qualifying, which is a huge thing. And then yeah. I was telling him, he was telling me, you know, Sajan is a double Olympian. And I'm like, sir, yeah. but you're a four or five time Olympian. You know, so he was laughing. <laughs> uh, really amazing. So he continues to give back. A lot of people at his age, having achieved so many things, might have retired and taken a break, you know. But he still has that ambition that let me get Sajan to the semifinals in the Olympics. Let me, hopefully he'll work for another four years and get some more people to do amazing feats. And, you know, maybe one day get into that. Uh, Olympic final, which is amazing for India. And, uh, you know, him moving to Dubai, I think it gives the swimmers an access to better facilities. Uh, like in the lockdown, Sajan was still able to train, whereas in India, pools were closed for 9-10 months. So, it does help him being there. And the fact that he's always to us, he's always like the Indian national coach. But the fact that he's based in Dubai doesn't make any difference for us. Yeah. So, uh, so my next question to you is that you are an Olympian and you know like what it takes to be an Olympian. So what, according to you, is the special ingredient or the spice that you have mixed in your training or your lifestyle uh, during the uh, preparation period uh, before the Sydney 2000 Games? So what, according to you, is the spice uh, in to get that you know brand name of uh, being an Olympian for a lifetime? Yeah, definitely. It's quite an elite club. And uh, when I, I just spoke to Sajan and Srihari, I messaged them because... You don't want to disturb them also going into a big thing. And I said, welcome to the club, to Srihari. Of course, for Sajan, he's a double Olympian. Yeah, yeah, so for him, he's been there, done that. But I still told them, enjoy every moment. Because like you said, there's always something extra that you have to do to become an Olympian. Yes, a lot of people trained with me. They won national medals, even international medals. But I think what made the difference was two things. One is, I had amazing support. My parents, from day one, when I said I have an Olympic dream, they never laughed at me. They gave it 100%, whether it was being there with me morning and evening for my classes, whether it's giving me the best food, whatever uh, nutrition they could afford, uh, sending me out of the country at their own expenses. My parents actually sold their house and put that money into my training. So that shows you, you know, the selling the family house and investing in something, how much of belief they had in me. So that obviously gave me a lot of confidence, uh, having good coaches to back you up. Even my coach in Australia, Bernie, was really good. Uh, apart from Pradeep sir for most of my time and then I think the one key ingredient on, on part of the swimmer is you have to have that focus because you will have setbacks I had injuries I had shoulder issues tendonitis uh, just before the Olympics I had a very bad back issue through the Olympics actually so while I swam the Olympic heats I had my back fully taped up with that physio tape and uh, you know I was in quite a bit of pain but somehow I swam through it so I think uh, that focus that yes I have to do this uh, a lot of discipline and consistency. There is no days off. Like, you know, they are, even your day off when you're resting, you're maybe working on your mental strength or you're making sure your diet is good. So we had to do a lot of sacrifices. But if you really want it, it's more like a choice that you make, more than a sacrifice. You choose not to go on holidays with your family sometimes. You stay back and train. You choose to swim on your birthday, on the festivals. January 1st morning when people are sleeping, you choose to go to the pool. So you have to make that conscious choice. And Really, that in that motivation has to come from within. It's not something that my pair, your parents, your coach can do. So I think that's the difference. You look at Sajan; he had a very serious neck injury, um, and he recovered in the pandemic. So he used the pandemic and the shutdown to help recover. And he's very, very strong mentally. He's raised by a single mom. You look at Sri Hari; he lost his father a couple of months back. He had COVID himself. You know, so this is the kind of mentality where yes, physically maybe we all do the same workouts. Maybe some people are built stronger than some of the Olympians, to better build, taller, stronger. But I think the mental element is a huge, plays a huge role. Uh, both the boys, when I spoke to them, they were so calm. And Srihari is only 20, right? So I think even when I was younger, I was very, very focused. Uh, luckily, I was in Australia for those last few months. There was no distractions. It was eat, sleep, swim, uh, you know, exercise. That was it. That was my whole life. And because of that, I even took a year off from my studies, came back and did my uh, you know, my uh, degree a little later. But all those things help you really focus and put 100% of your time, your effort, your focus into your sport. Okay, great. 
so like now that you have experienced both the sides of swimming like as a as an athlete as an olympian and now that you have tra- you know transferred yourself into as a swimming coach so uh, can you highlight some of the uh, 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 like a, quite a, a bit of a difference or what or how was uh, how was your experience being an athlete and now that you are on the other like the flip side you know now you are not in the pool and outside uh, like screaming on maybe like just Uh, like sarcastically screaming on the children or uh, on your sk- like on your swimmers so how does it feel and uh, how does it feel to be on the deck or just not wearing that costume and but being the coach i would love to still be a swimmer but unfortunately you can't swim forever i still swim a lot on my own but yeah i i actually chose had to choose between swim teaching which is for beginners and swim coaching so i've done both i've taught right from toddlers who are 6 month old uh to master swimmers were 70 80 and i've taught competitive swimmers as well so i love it yes teaching competitive swimmers is good fun because you remember all the things that you went through and then you realize like sometimes how much of trouble that uh, these swimmers can give the coach right so i would tell them that you know i would never bunk laps if it was you know 50 hundreds i would do it without any question i'd make sure i keep my timings i'd lead my lane so um sometimes i would get a little frustrated with them that you know they are so talented they're getting the best facilities the parents are putting time and money the kids need to put more you know so i would do that i have a great team called the marlins it's a young team they run very well we've had couple of gold medals in the state and nationals we've had some national records but at the end of the day i think my joy and what i enjoy most is actually swim teaching so teaching beginners uh, young kids uh, toddlers even adults so for me i get more joy of teaching somebody how to cross the pool for the first time when they're able to swim freestyle across the pool they're so excited right? or when you see them a small kid falling in love with the water then you feel like wow i'm i'm letting somebody do something for life it's a life saving skill uh, even my own kids right they're seven i have seven year old twins uh, they are so yeah. comfortable in the water uh, just before the lockdown we went on a holiday and you know we jumped into the ocean together they were swimming in the sea with me they're so re- relaxed they were diving under you know coming up so that's what i think swimming is all about enjoying the water having fun being very confident in deep water and things like you know strokes all that will come later so that's where i find my joy and yes of course we realize that our coaches might have shouted at us but when you're on the other side and you have become a coach then you realize that yes if you're <laughs> fooling around or if the coach thinks that you're not doing you know as as well as you could do you are not living up to your potential they will push you so i am not a very strict coach uh, generally the swimmers come if especially if they're very young and they say ma'am it's my best friend's birthday and they're just 8 or 10 years i'd be like don't worry go for your friend's birthday you're quite young when they get older and they get more serious and they you know at the senior national level or trying for an international medal then yes i would tell them i'd be a little more tough on them and tell them how to focus and how to be strong and uh, do a lot of mental training as well but when they're young it's all about enjoying the sport for sure can i be your superhero defensive question to this like you came into this sport uh, i don't know but you uh, you might come into this sport as a competitive athlete like a ambition that you want to be at the you know swim at the pinnacle of the sport like the olympic but not everyone or like every swimmer uh, intends to come into this sport uh, you know knowing that he wants to qualify for the olympics he may be just doing it uh, by the force of his or family or maybe just as a fun activity or maybe an ex- an extracurricular or summer camp so how do you deal with that that kind of mindset or a perspective yeah i think you have to first of all spot the talent like you said if the if it's only the parent who's pushing the child the child will never go up to the uh, to a very high level the parents can only push for so long when the kid gets a little more independent they decide they don't want to do it anymore so we first start by getting the kids to love the water what we call water familiarization where people get into the water they learn the different elements buoyancy uh, you know balance in the water they learn the four strokes once they do that they start doing proper training then you see who is able to listen take your feedback improve well work with the team uh, you know start improving their timing start improving their strokes then it's up to the coaches and the teachers to pick the talent right to spot the talent go and have a word with their parents suppose the parents say that no i'm sorry i'll only bring my kids here every summer then even if you try and convince them and they don't listen then there's no use pursuing that because you know it's a full time sport once you get into it you need to be fully committed 
if you find the combination where the child is intrinsically motivated they want to swim they have good stroke technique and good work ethic and the parents are willing to give time then you really tell that parent you put them into a program slightly more advanced program then you do pre competitive competitive program and that's how you really move them up you know and sometimes even in my pool say i don't have a 50 meter pool right now if some kids come and say i want to go to the next level then i will speak to the parents and put them into a pool into a club which has a 50 meter pool so you shouldn't be greedy and try and hold on to the swimmers uh, like you said people want different things so if some kids might say that even if they're very talented they like i'm very happy to just be in the advanced batch i don't want to go into competitive i'm happy i'll come every day but i'll do it for fitness that's also fine so as long as you and the swimmer have a discussion and you you know you understand where they're headed what their goals are it's fine so not everybody like you said will want to be to the olympics or not everybody can go there so it's more important that you have swimming in your life forever it could be as fitness it could be a professional uh, you know a part of you but you decide speak to your coach and then you go ahead with that yeah so my next question to you is, is that you have seen experienced first hand and been associated with this sport for such a long time so uh, how have you seen the sport grow uh, how what was it back in in the in your time and now 21 years later we are having you know the ISL third season and so much of a commercialization into the sport we have sponsors we have brands supporting swimmers uh, so how, how have you seen the sport grow and uh, what's your say on this uh, i am very excited actually about the fact that the sport has grown uh, one is i think more people have exposure to, to swimming lot more academies coming in lot of swimmers themselves setting up academies at least in bangalore i'm talking about but also in other parts of this of the country more access to pools or if apartments have pools now uh, there be clubs which are close to your location that have pools schools have pools so definitely from the time i was swimming in the 90s to now there's a huge number of extra pools that access to pool is there for more kids they're also starting very young they're starting at 6 7 months they're learning to enjoy the water so by the time they're seven or eight they already have good stroke technique good water confidence and you're able to put them into a different variety of events so i think it has improved a lot and the only thing which can still improve is more funding uh, more money coming in towards the state level uh, state champions national champions right now yes if a sri hari or a uh, you know sajan qualifies for the olympics they would get a, a check of 10 lakhs but what about all the money they spent to get there they need to have more support so there are a few good um you know foundations the like go sports foundation olympic gold quest a lot of them are supporting the top athletes uh, kelo india games is great where the top uh, you know junior athletes school level athletes at the kelo india games maybe top 5 or top 10 are given some financial support by the government so it's good it is much better than what we had when we were young we did not have dietitians we did not have strength and conditioning coaches so nowadays if you are able to afford that then you can have those experts helping you and you can take your swimming to the next level but what about the people who don't have that right so we really have to bring more funds uh, more of these foundation who support our swimmers then we can go to the next level but already you can see right the improve improvement in coaching improvement in nutrition sports science as a whole you can see somebody like shri hari and sajid doing a qualifying which is a very big deal you know being maybe top 50 60 in the world is a very big deal for an indian swimmer so you touch based upon uh, like the a cut uh, quite a few times so uh, i wanted to uh, ask you this like there's so much uh, like i feel that like the male counterpart is good like they have a, quite a few am- amount of representation uh, they are getting a cuts right now but what about the female side what about the like women's uh, i don't feel uh, i feel like they are still underrepresented and are still not in the limelight so what is making uh, make uh, like pushing them into uh, outside the limelight and what 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 should be done in order to bring more and more female athletes into this sport and get you know maybe in future get some more a cuts uh, and have a bigger swimming swimming contingent for the olympics yeah that's a great question because even we are as a, as a swimming community very worried because since 2004 i had qualified in 2000 in 2004 shikha tandon qualified in the b qualifying time in those days yeah. b qualifying was an automatic uh, you know uh, ticket to the olympics uh, but since then not a single girl has even made the b qualifying which is very sad forget about the a qualifying uh, nobody including shivani who went in 2016 and mana who is going now have they both not even reached the b qualifying so that is a very scary part because like you said like i said there's better facilities better coaching uh, 
the swimmers have more experience, more funding, and yet they're not able to do what the males are doing. So it has to be maybe girls are dropping out more at a younger age when it's coming to 10 standard. They're going into a competitive field, like a professional field. They're not choosing swimming as their profession, but they really need to see somebody like a Srajan or Sri Hari. They have their own sports managers now. They have brands that support them. Uh, you know, social media helps a lot. So I'm just saying that it can be a profession now. Uh, yes, swimming is an amateur sport, so there isn't as much money as something like tennis or badminton, where if you win a, a tournament, you'll get money. But really, the girls, I think, have to be a lot more competitive. They have to set higher goals. Right now, they know that, okay, universality quota is there. So if I you know, do so many meets or if I go to the world championships, then I have a chance to qualify. But the boys, you know, they realize that, okay, there's so much a competition. B qualifying, there so many guys have done, right? 24 guys in the last few years have done the B qualifying. They know that, okay, if I want to go to the Olympics, I have to now make the A cut. So that is how important it is to, uh, you know, dream big, have a lot of, uh, what do you say, competition amongst. Like, I feel like the girls, everybody who's winning now has been winning for quite some time. Like, Mana has won the backstroke. Shivani used to win the 200s. We even have Richa Mishra who's swimming. When I was swimming, she's still coming and winning medals. So this shows you that we really need new girls to come up. Maybe the coaches at the grassroots levels, which is where even I teach, need to pick up more talented girls, speak to the parents and not just get them into swimming, but in the crucial phase at, you know, 9, 10 standard or getting into college, we need to make sure that they choose swimming over going into, you know, doing a CET exam and becoming a doctor and engineer. It's great if they want to do that, but what if they really have the talent and they have the dream? We should maybe see how much we can help them and get them to the next level because there's no excuse now. You know, they have be if the boys can do it with the same facilities, there's no reason why the girls can't do it. Yeah. So any thoughts or advice uh, that you want to share before we sign off today? Uh, yeah, I would say my, something my father had taught me is about the three H's. Um, so the three H's is uh, hunger, hard work and humility. Uh, the H, the first H is hunger. You wake up every morning wanting to achieve, um, you know, dreaming the dream. Uh, every morning, whether you're tired, whether you're injured, whether you're sleepy, you go in there with a lot of excitement, a lot of enthusiasm. The second H is hard work. There's no shortcut to success. There's one and only one thing, which is a lot of hard work is what's going to get you there. Uh, if it means sacrifices, you do that. If it means not seeing your parents, going somewhere else and training, like Sajan has not seen his mother for almost a year. Uh, he trains, you know, in another country. So hard work, there's nothing that can replace it. Even if you're talented and you have a good physique or, you know, good genes from your parents, you still have to put in that work. And the third hedge is once you achieve your goals, whether it's a state medal, whether it's a national medal, whether it's the best time, remember that there's so much more you can do. Like even a Sajjan or Srihari, yes, they made the A cut, but they are the types who are very, very humble boys. They now know that, okay, now I must try to get the semis. If they don't make the semis this time, they will definitely be training in, you know, uh, um, in 2024 and trying to make the Paris Olympics. So that's how focused you really have to be. You have to be, uh, like I said, hungry, a lot of hard work and a lot of humility in goes in. And always remember that only you can dream. If uh, you can dream it, then you can achieve it. You have to really believe in yourself and talk to yourself in a really positive way, what we call self-talk, right? Uh, other people can say whatever they want, but if your talk, what you tell yourself in your own mind, that is the most important thing. So for all the kids listening, you know, don't listen to all the negative comments and people who are maybe jealous of you or your competitors. Listen to your own self, listen to your friends and family, your coach, your teammates who are very close to you, who know how, you know, uh, uh, how much of, uh, uh, say, talent you have, how much attention. And listen to them, believe in yourself and chase your dreams. Thank you. Thank you for coming up and sharing your uh, story and, you know, Olympic journey. It was great Thank having you. you. And, you know, we have the Olympics uh, uh, year 2020 or whatever you say 2021 yes. and it's so exciting that you know all the athletes from all over the world are uh, coming together and competing at even these tough times it's great thanks so much Adintya bye and good luck to you